Hello everyone, welcome back to another Buffalo Prime shoutcasting demo. I'm here with the boys at Trinity Force Touchdown, our little friend group that plays League together. We are watching on Alan's on, so we can watch this pick phase as we get the banning phase to go right away. Let's see what the bans are going to be for this team. I think generally TFT, a lot of us members, we know pretty much the champions we don't like to play against. We don't necessarily ban against the, the meta, although it is possible. Alanzon is going to switch with Zuji. He is going to take the jungle. Zuji is going to go to the top lane. We see that notation right there. We see the bands coming across for TFT. It is Zed coming out of the mid lane. Evelyn, Pike, Elise, and Darius. I have a feeling Zuji is going to try to play the Garen once again. There was a previous video where he went toe to toe with the Darius. Did not do well in laning phase, but was able to come back through the team fights. We will see. If he likes to pick that again, as Jungler's Only Please in the mid lane will take the Twisted Fate. I don't know if I've ever seen Jungler's Only Please playing Twisted Fate. His actual name, Bruno. So that'll be an interesting pick, as we see Blitzcrank being hovered on the other side. Blitzcrank, a very strong support right now. His hooking range has increased. He does select it, and that's a Jax hover there, too. Another incredibly strong champion, especially on the top lane, or in the jungle, really. Jax has the ability to flex around a little bit. Parsky looking to maybe take Misfortune here, or the Ezreal, which he's been known to play and does fairly well on. As the Nautilus will go to Unknown Asian. Able to play that champion very well, and Kaisa will go to the Parski. Another champion he's incredibly confident on. So the Kaisa and Nautilus will be a good counter to at least the Blitzcrank. I don't know if we've seen the ADC just yet, unless that Shax decides to go down there with the Blitzcrank. And we see Zuji hovering the Garen. Not too surprising, considering Zuji is pretty confident on that Garen. The Annie is going to come through on the mid lane, just getting an anniversary skin. We'll see if they are used that skin into this fight. That is Illusion Blitzcrank bot lane. Jarvan is going to go to the side of Alanzon, and Zuji will be able to get his Garen as we take a look for the potentially the jungler on the on the other side. I was about to say the red side. I don't know if they're the red side, though. I didn't take a look. And looks like it's going to be Vi. Vi in the jungle. You see the matchup right in front of you. We will be right back to break down the picks. And to get a, ready to join the Rift, where Trinity Force Touchdown will take on yet another slew of randoms on the other side. We'll be right back. You guys like uh, the picture I put in memes? It's Peon no. Reeves. I hate it. Yeah, what the I don't fuck get it. Thing? It's Peon that Reeves. Mean? That's dumb. You're dumb. <laughs> Maybe. Pretty dumb. <laughs> How to delete some? Can I delete that <laughs> off your own Discord? Yeah, I'm gonna f pin it. No. Mm, <laughs> how to leave the server? How to leave the server? Uh, how to delete somebody else's server? <laughs> what the fuck is that, BP? Piano Reeves. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing. Shut up! You're laughing. I hate, I hate the fact. Or are laughing at how dumb it is, not because yeah, it's the, good. I, I, And here is the matchup, blue side, red side. Blue side will be along to TFT as the J4. It was supposed to be the bot lane or the top laner, Alan's on. It is switching with Zuji, so we see the Garen's actually going up against the Jax. I think that's a good skilled matchup. I think Zuji's pretty confident in his pick with the Garen. J4 and Vi both with, again, good ganking potential, as most junglers do have. So we'll see them hopefully exert some pressure across the map. Twisted Fate into the Annie. I do like the Twisted Fate here, mostly because I'm not a big confident person with Annie. I think she's a little weak right now in the current meta, but... She does have a new anniversary skin. I'm sure that's why that person's playing it. Kaisa and Nautilus against the Lucian in the Blitz Crank will really heavily depend on how these supports are able to get their ADCs in position to get quality kills. So I think that's going to be a big focus point here. Let's see how these supports interact with one another, how the mid lane's going to play out. And obviously, Jungle Difference will be impactful too. Let's get onto the Rift and see what's going to happen. As we enter into the Rift, let's introduce our players. As soon as I make an adjustment. Boop, there we go. In the top lane will be Zuji onto this Garen. 
Zuja currently a gold four player with 41 LP. Alan's on in the jungle with the J4, a silver three player. Yep, with 88 LP. Jungle's only please in the mid lane. He's a gold four player with 13 LP. Dr. Parsnip, we call him Parsky though. Silver two with 20 LP. And then Unknown Asian on the support. He is gold 100 LP. Has got two wins onto his rope as the Blitzcrank will already pull the Nautilus, who will go ahead and walk the other way, flash over the wall, and the Blitzcrank does his job early, which is invade. Speaking of invading, let's introduce the red side of the team. It's person 325 in the top lane, a silver one player with 100 LP, looking to break into the gold elo. Gonski onto the Vi, an unranked player. Unhappy Camper 96 is the Annie. That Annie is a silver two player with 62 LP. Be right back, Coffee is the Lucian. Silver 2 with 10 LP, and then finally Blitzcrank is initial G onto the bot side. Is Silver 1 with 37 LP, so a lot of silver on the side of the randoms. In fact, all silver, as we have a bunch of golds and a potential plat player in Unknown Asian. Wish him the best of luck, as he is looking to win one more game at his promos, and he's in. And as always, folks, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Leave any feedback you can. You are watching a demo, and I appreciate it. Again, my name is Buffalo Prime. This is something that I've always wanted to try to start doing, and I think these YouTube videos are a good way to practice. But any feedback you guys have, if I'm saying anything incorrectly about the game, I do want to do more than just League of Legends shoutcasting, but this is the game that's most accessible in terms of a spectator mode. And already a little bit of a fight here, too. Zuji is going to be stunned by the Jax. That's going to be a little bit of a problem for Zuji, though, is that stun's going to allow Jax to add a lot of auto damage onto him. It is going to walk away. Neither summoners on the top side have Ignite. In fact, the only Ignite is going to be Unknown Asian. Another jump from the Jax there. And a stun, but he'll walk away. And on the side of the randoms, there are two Ignites on the battlefield. Annie and the Blitzcrank. A lot of TP pressure, though, for uh, TFT, as they have two individuals that can TP pretty much anywhere onto the map. Plus, Twisted Fate's ultimate essentially allows them to do the same. Looking to get some abuse onto the Annie early. The Jax is invading this J4. He is going to walk away. Garen did ping that the J4, or sorry, that the Jax is missing. Is going to roam down there, but the Jax will do well to disrupt the jungler. Here comes Twisted Fate, though. As they do have the Jax surrounded, but nobody's going to pull the trigger on it. That is going to be a slight disrupt onto J4's pathing. He will have to restart. And in the mid lane, the Annie does have a level up. This puts the stun down and the silence. Jungler's only place gets a stun back, though, as that will be a good even trade. Oh, a little bit more damage, though, for the Annie. Both of them forced to pop some of their healing. Here is Vi on her bot side, looking to potentially gank onto this bot lane. I don't know. Did they spot her? Can't tell if there's a ward there. There is not. Oh, a flash forward from Jungle's Only Please. Here comes Alan's on. Oh, he's going to go in all the way. The Annie does get the ignite and the first blood on two. Twisted Fates and will walk away clean. The Vi is there to try to get pressure away from her as the J4 has nothing else to do but to back. The first blood will go to the randoms. This Annie did not flinch during the flash forward from the Twisted Fate. Instead, stands in there strong, gets the ignite on, gets the stun down, doesn't even care that the J4 is looming. Manages to scare herself a kill, forcing the J4 to walk away while the Vi was there in backup. Suji has the tower pushed in, gets a little bit of a stun from the Jax, though, as he decides to put some damage down. The Jax is silenced here. Only about a quarter of the health left. He's going to try to go all in and one more tap, and the flash away is going to do it, and that will not save the Jax. As Garen was able to flash in... There must have been a passive at work there that I'm not aware of, but that was the the securing kill onto the Garen. As Zuji is able to do and actually gets the teleport and the flash away from the Jax. As both summoner spells are down, he will return to base, will likely teleport himself back in. As not only does he have a kill advantage on the top lane, but also has a CS advantage and a hook there will fail from that side of the Blitzcrank. And he's trying to clear some vision for herself.
So we take a look at the early landscape for five minutes in. It is a 300 gold lead for Trinity Force touchdown. Another failed hook there by the Blitzcrank. So we've seen Vi mostly play counter ganking jungling right now. While J4 has attempted a couple of, uh, of tries, hasn't gotten anything done yet. This is a pretty low kill as of right now, but Zuji trying to change that gets a good amount of damage and forces a healing potion away. And Tippers is thrown. That's Giant Teemo. The ultimate is down for Annie now that does not secure a kill. But she did pop six first, so that was an all-in attempt there. Good amount of damage onto the Blitzcrank. There's a pull there from the Nautilus as the Kaiser will try to follow up. Gets pulled back in, actually, and there continues the fight. And I think that Blitzcrank sealed his own fate by drawing in the attention of Unknown Asian, who was able to deal some more damage to get Parsky up there. And he also burns the Ignite as well. Kind of a misplay there by the Blitzcrank, though the Lucian did not die. And J4 is there to try to save that middle turret. And he getting a lot of damage down. That is a two-level lead. And that poke is just ridiculous, too. So that'll be a play for the bot side. So Blitzcrank again, pulling in the Nautilus, allowing him to get some damage in. The Vi is going to gank here onto the Garen. No stun available, I believe, for the Jax, though, as he's got to warm that up again. Zuji looking to potentially run away. There goes a ward down, so they can go ahead and see him. Oh, and the ultimate Vi will not survive. As here comes Twisted Fate, he pulls the ultimate down, gets the stun onto the Jackson. The spinning will do it. Jing, jungler's only plays will secure the kill. But an absolutely clean roam there by the Twisted Fate. As the gank not only fails to get the target, but both the bot laner and the jungler will die for it. Journey to Force Touchdown looking great early. So Vi with the attempted gank there. Again, Twisted Fate did well to recognize that the gank was happening. He used his ultimate to get over there. Alan's on attempting to steal away this blue buff. It is going to be a little bit of a skirmish. He does get the smite down on it. It has both buffs. And Vi is forced to walk away. So although J4 hasn't done anything yet to really push ahead his lanes, he is making the Vi uncomfortable. He has a lead over the Vi as well. Level 6 compared to level 5. But here comes J4. Speaking of which, here's the gank that they were looking for. The Lucian will die first. J4 puts down the barrier. Traps the Blitzcrank in just long enough. I don't know where he thinks he's going, but Parski will go ahead and get the kill there. It is a double kill onto the bot lane. As another ultimate goes down for Annie. Pings are going across that they're going to try to get up there. There is a ward waiting for them, though, so they will be spotted. However, that's not going to deter Unknown Asian as he looks to try to engage. Gets the flash forward, gets the hit, and then stun onto the Annie. That'll be enough time for J4 to launch himself in and secure the kill. As suddenly J4 is woken up. And the Unknown Asian and his roaming Nautilus now a part of four of the seven kills for Trinity Force. The highest kill participation on the team. As we see, and I told you early, I thought the supports were going to matter here. Which support is going to impact their ADCs more? And so far, the Nautilus is showing his stuff quite literally. Or figuratively, I don't know. Taking a look at pure farming. Garen does have a big lead over this Jackson. 0 and 2 Jax now has to pretty much sit back and let Garen do whatever he wants. As you see him just kind of standing there, letting Garen farm up as he will have to await for the power. The minions to go under tower. Garen doing a good job of stalling that. We see both Vi and the J4 under the top side of the jungle. You can imagine the J4 is looking to potentially gank onto this Jax. The Vi is farming, though. The Jax is going to realize that the gank's happening. He gets the spin around, gets the stun on both of them, and will allow him to retreat safely. Gary doing a good job of freezing away, but here comes Nautilus getting a knockoff onto the Lucian. The Ignite is down, and there goes another kill to Parski. The Ignite is also countered on the other side by the Blitzcrank, but there's no real purpose for that Ignite, as he will get docked once, twice, and three times. You're out of double kill going to Parski and his Kaisa. But here comes a gank onto the top side. The Vi misses the knockoff. The flash away will allow Zuji to get away, but there's the Vi knockoff, and he gets shut down. And instead of going away, the J4 decides to gank onto the end. He gets a kill. And Twisted Fate will stay in his lane as they trade one for one with the top laner, Garen, going down to the Vi. While the Annie goes over to another J4 gank. Just took him a little bit of time. He wanted to wait till level six, but now he is exerting pressure in a way that Vi is not. As he will get the Scuttle Crab onto the bot side, will claim vision. 
potentially set them up for this Cloud Drake. And already he is on it. Twisted Fate's going to go over there and help out. The bot lane's going to roam up as well. This will be the first objective for Tr Trinity Ford's touchdown. As really, there's nobody that can stop him. The red team doesn't even realize it's happening until right about now. So 10 to 2 lead. It's already a 4,000 gold lead. This game's already getting a little ugly as J4, or I'm sorry, as Garen is going to move on to the Jax, who is going to wait to use the stun. Pulls it right there, gets the stun across, but that will not deter Zuji as he has the mobility to catch up. And a flash away by the Jax will save his life for now. That's a flash you don't have later as the Vi decides to go into two of the members. J4 will get melted down and grab there by the Blitzcrank. Well, give him the kill on, Trinity, or on uh, Twisted Fate. Not his Lucian, interestingly enough. As that is two kills going to the red team. A Jax did go back to get up some items and uses his teleport. He has absolutely no subs available and Zuji knows it. He starts to move in. However, waves pushed up a little too much. He can't tower dive just yet. We may see that a little bit later, though, as the ultimate comes down for the end. He's trying to get some plates here. Now the Twisted Fate is dead. Does manage to get one. And another all in there by the Nautilus. A big hit there by the Kai'Sa. And he jumps forward. Oh, but gets immediately grabbed, I think, mid-air there by the Blitzcrank. Pretty lucky hook there. As they are going to focus down the Lucian, though. A couple more hits will secure it. However, this guy says in trouble and does manage to get the kill before the the blitz crank kills the Kaisa back. J4 did manage to get a pick onto the Annie. The Annie not having a good time here as the pull will actually move Nautilus into tower range. There is another gank onto the top side as the Vi goes in. Another stun by the Jax and that'll be a clean kill as Jax manages to get one back from the Garen. But here goes the mid turret. Couple plates going now to Trinity, or sorry, Trinity Forest. Wow, see, Twisted Fate. Get those two mixed up all the time. But that's okay. Twisted Fate managing to get a couple of blades here. He's just going to have to back up, though, as his minion dies. So a couple of interesting things happening. First of all, there is a little bit of a priority to this top lane, as the Jax was behind. The Vi did come out and help. Here comes the teleport from Garen, though. Without the help of the Vi, the Garen's going to be able to do whatever he wants. Here comes Trinity for... Or, oh my gosh, Twisted Fate... Stun's going to come out to no one, and there goes the ultimate fair from the Garen, but that might be a security. He does place the warning, able to get away, but Unknown Agent is there. It smacks him once, and there he goes. And as for the Vi, the J4 was able to roam up as well. An excellent map awareness from Trinity Force. Twisted Fate using the ultimate to engage the fight. And they were in the right place at the right time. And they're going to look to get some plates for it. So the Vi struggling in the jungle. Now the J4 has woken up. And again, he woke up a while ago. Once he hit level 6, he started to roam around and has successfully done that. So Vi now at a disadvantage. The Annie's getting walked all over. Despite the CS tie here, the Twisted Fate has done more to impress the map than the Annie has. This bot lane's in trouble. I'll say it right here. The bot lane's in trouble. The Blitzcrank is not playing to protect his ADC. He's not playing to give the ADC kills. He's not playing to help the solution get ahead he is playing for kills and if that means he gets it or if that means his his, his adc gets it he doesn't care as right there you see it there goes lucian most blitzcrank doing that whole time he was targeting the weaker kaisa could not get that team off of him as once again his adc dies and i gotta tell you two kills onto the blitzcrank is way better than two kills onto a lucian and the jump forward from the Vi here. He is going to try to get an engage here. The missed Blitz Crank hook as Nautilus will sacrifice himself to allow Parsky to keep his lead. But they are going to try to trail him down here. And he did pop his ult her ultimate. I don't think she... Oh, she did. She did get a kill out of that, didn't she? Look at that. But Twisted Fate is down here as well. And so is Zuji. Where did he come from? Zuji able to go in. It looks like he did not use his teleport. But that will be an anti-dead there. As he's going to immediately go onto this Blitzcrank, a flash forward by the Twisted Fate, which will be the stun that he needs. And there is a double kill to the Garen as the Blitzcrank goes down as well. So an excellent roam there from the top in the mid lane of Trinity Force. As the red team thought they had a little bit of a holding there by allowing themselves to kill the Nautilus, but lose a lot in exchange. And this might be mid lane turret. What's the Vi gonna do? Whole lot of nothing. As pings come down from the Lucian, saying that his lane is missing. 
Jax is the next target. He knows that it is. There's a teleport there coming from the Trinity or from the Twisted Fate. Gets a stun and managing to avoid the stun from Jax too. And there's a leap forward. He does place the ward down and able to jump to it as well. But Zuji is already there to try to grab him from there. Blitzcrank is going to try to help him. Gets the knockout and places the ultimate onto the Zuji. But that just turns his attention over. Twisted Fate already moved away as there's a pick there. And that's going to be a stun from the Annie. And a jump on from the Jax. That will be a shutdown onto the Garen. That's going to be a death to the Twisted Fate. And just like Trinity Force did to them, the red team roams perfectly well, but that left Lucian alone, and there he goes for the fifth time. Kaisa managing to get yet another kill. And again, that Blitzcrank roam did help with that fight, but you left Lucian alone, you let him die again, and this Kaisa's getting huge. And the second Cloud Drake for Trinity Force touchdown goes through. So let's do this again. We're at 16 minutes. We're looking at almost a 5k lead for Trinity Force as the Annie is caught out of position to jump forward and the ultimate used by the J4 doesn't manage to capture her. There is an ignite down and Tibbers is not going to be able to do the damage. The flash away will save Alan Zahn's life. The Blitzcrank is coming yet again as Lucian is roaming to the top side. Blitzcrank interested in getting a fight here the nautilus goes ahead and engages the doogies there as well but Craig's bought off more than you can chew the buy is there to try to help out there's the ultimate from the Blitzcrank, he does use the Ignite onto the Garen. That's not going to do a whole lot, though, as Vi's forced to run away. Gets pulled in by the Nautilus again. What an excellent hook there by Unknown Asia. A double kill for Garen as he's getting big, too. They look for Lucian. This deadly duo. Two tanky boys. Two powerful boys. And they found him. The hit there, and that will be... <laughs> this is probably going to be a free kill. As a grab, the knocked airborne, the silence, and the kill. Zuji on a killing spree now. Seven and three for him as this Lucian's just not having a good day. Jax does manage to catch the Twisted Fate out of position, though. And there goes a turret for the side of Trinity Forest. Jax looking to engage on the Nautilus there. He did jump forward, and Zuji's waiting in the wings. They do not know he's there. Nautilus acting as a decoy, trying to pretend like, hey, you know, I'm just trying to defend this turret, man. But there's the Blitz crank. Is this now a 2v3? And they pull in Zuji, though, and that's a lot of CC. He wasn't able to move, and that'll be a shutdown for the Jax 300 gold bounty claimed on Garen's head, and they will take the mid turret as well. Absolutely well-coordinated fight there. You had the stun from the Jax. You had the pull by the Blitzcrank in the knockup. You had any stun to go there with him. You left Garen useless. And in that situation, that's exactly what you need. But the Annie stepped up a little too far. There is a pull from the Nautilus, though, but that will not be enough to save Annie's life. It will be enough to kill the Nautilus, though, as Jax gets another one and looks for another. He flashes forward and gets to the J4 as well. Kaisa forced to flee. Twisted Fate in the backdrop gets a stun onto the Blitzcrank, although he's caught between three members of the red team. Gets pulled by the Blitzcrank, who actually doesn't kill him this time. And does what a support is supposed to do. Sets up the kill for somebody else and walks away. He's learning, folks. We're so proud of him. Sujin recognizes that the red buff is getting taken a What? Now he realizes that Jax is there. What a terrible spot for him to be. And here comes the goon squad back down as Blitzcrank and Vi are looking to recover what has been lost, but Garen's not interested. Or is he? Notices that both of them are there. Goes in onto the Vi. However, that's a 1v3 again. And Garen is going to try to at least claim one. He is going to try to walk away. The Kaisa is there, though, to back him up. And a Blitzcrank hook will not make it. That would have been an absolute kill. And here comes Nautilus, though. The Vi is weak. The Blitzcrank is already half health, and there's going to be a big hit there. And a stun. Kaisa will go ahead and clean up house here. There's a knock up onto the Lucian. Oh, poor Lucian. And the Vi goes in onto the Kaisa. The Kaisa has no one around, but still manages to turn the fight around onto the Vi. As a stopwatch comes out for Annie, that will be not be enough for her to, to stay alive. Although, dude, she does claim the Kaisa before she dies. As Parski was a little bit too far up, and Annie was able to at least claim one before her inevitable doom. But that will be a turret for Trinity Force. As Red Team has made some attempts to stay in this game. But unfortunately, they've all been thwarted. Trinity Force able to come back in every situation and at least claim a kill, claim an objective, or claim something. As the Blitzcrank goes for hooks and misses absolutely everybody. Knocks the ultimate. I'm pretty sure that only hit the Nautilus there, though, as the, as the Twisted Fate is forced to flash away. He does get a stun onto the Jax that will save his life as he manages to move out. And the Blitzcrank attempts a hook, but nobody's there. 
All five members of the red team grouping up in mid. It has now become an A-Ram for them as Jax decides to peel. And blue team is going to look to reset. And why not? They have a 6,000 gold lead. Every time the red team has done something where they think they've gotten a little bit of an advantage, Trinity Force takes it right back. And they've spotted out the Blitz Crank. Twisted Fate in a bad position here as a hook attempt comes through and barely misses. If it wasn't for the Scuttle Crab speed, I think the Twisted Fate probably would have died there. But instead, they managed to stay alive and they are looking to turn this fight around. They get a, a pull onto the Twisted Fate who is already stunned and melts in the middle of the fight. But you already have J4 that's in there. Gets the ultimate and cages everybody in. And there goes the red team. It's, uh, it looks like a teleport's coming down for the Jax and he will teleport into nothing but his own grave. As he realizes his mistake, puts a ward down, jumps to it, and the ultimate for the Garen. An ace coming through for Trinity Force as they look to grab an inhibitor right now. A fight that the red team thought they were going to be able to win. They grabbed Twisted Fate early. They grabbed the J4 in the middle of the fight. But all of the damage on this team still alive. You did get J4, who again is a big damage dealer, but you have to worry about the Kai'Sa. You have to worry about the zoning ability of the Nautilus. J4 threw his ultimate down, leaving you trapped for Garen to simply spin and kill you all. And then the incredibly late reaction time from the Jax, the incredibly late teleport, which drew his own grave. Now he doesn't have flash, he doesn't have teleport. This is an easy mountain drake for Trinity Force. So what do you do if you're the red team here, huh? <laughs> J J4 flashes, it looks like. Not sure if that was a misclick onto his uh, smite. Which he uh, doesn't look like he had anyway. <laughs> That'd be interesting to know what happened there. As J4 is going to go into onto this Jax, though. It's only the two of them, though. As uh, of everybody that is on the red team, the competent player is the Jax. So, oh, and there goes Zuji. Walking into darkness where the entire team awaited him. I think that's probably what you have to do if you're the red team here. You're down so much. Your Nexus turrets are exposed on the mid lane. You have only your inhibitor towers left on the top of the bot side. You don't win team fights. And we're going to see it right here as they melt down the Vi. The Blitzcrank getting a little bit of pokes, but they're looking more towards the Annie right now. Lucian will run away as well. 0-7. His score line. And Annie was forced to flash away. Doesn't have much health left as the Kaisa <laughs> just zooms forward. Gets a knock up there by the Blitzcrank. Almost killing her, but she manages to get out with a, just a sliver of health. Takes three tower shots in the meantime. Ultimate there by the Lucian, who nobody's afraid of that one. A lot of good damage there on the Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank looking to pull somebody else in. Doesn't get it. Jax is here to help clean up, though. Manages to dodge the stun. As for now, the red team does salvage their top lane turret. Garen looking to apply pressure onto this bot side by split pushing. There is a lot of vision for the red team around the Baron side and onto the top side of the blue side's jungle. And here they go, sitting in a bush. And they're going to move between bushes. They find the ward finally. That'll get cleared as uh, Blitzcrank will look to back. They are going to have to respond to this meaty combo that's in the bot lane. That's the Garen and the Nautilus. J4 is looming as well as the Annie is going to go to respond. They're going to try to clear out the mid wave. And, that, and that, this is the situation that the red team is in. How, how do you leave base right now? And a teleport there by the Twisted Fate. They're looking to try to get this Annie on a kill. And they're probably going to try to apply the pressure from there. Zuji already ahead. It gets the spin, and there is the stopwatch trying to delay the inevitable at that point. Jungler's only plays managing to get a second kill of the game. And the red team calling for help. The Jax pushing out the mid lane. Does recognize the call, though, and moves back. And the Blitzcrank grabs a great target there as the J4 has nowhere to go. Does ignite the Twisted Fate. There is the Vi on the ultimate. Zuji is there to help clean up and the, well, the Vi meaning is doomed. But the Nautilus grab will take tower shots and there's another kill though. Lucian second of the fight. Jack's able to go in and get Twisted Fate as it's just a Garen. He's like, screw it, I'm going in. 
As Blitzcrank tries to hook, it manages to get a miss. That's a lot of tower shots by the Zuji. And by the Garen, I should say. This Blitzcrank will try to chase him out, but Garen knows better, and he will retreat for now. So some good picks there by the red team. You managed to get a two for four trade. Well, three for four, really, and he did die before the main team fight happened. But is it enough? Is it enough to curve this almost, uh, just about 8,000 gold deficit that you're in? You have super minis pushing your, your mid wave. Your top lane's only pushed about halfway through. Your bot lane is pushed up into your side there is a ping. They recognize that the blue team is probably going to be going for the Baron here. They had a little bit of vision on there, too. They're going to try to melt it down from here, though. Alanzon does have smite, but so does this Vi as that team is moving in. Garen's on guard duty. It's a good person to have there. As he recognizes the Vi is there. The Blitzcrank is there as well. And there was no contesting as they did not get there in time. And Trinity Force is going to look to force a fight. Blitzcrank is in a bad position. Gets a lot of damage done by the Garen. There's a jump and the ultimate from the J4. That will peel out the Blitzcrank. But here comes another fight. The team fight there as the Kaizo is getting focused on. But Garen's on to the back line. The Lucian will not be able to survive as the Jax does manage to get the Kaizo. The ultimate goes down from the Garen onto the Lucian. And he drops to the J4. And Vi will go and look to fight the Twisted Fate and melt him down. Currently a three for two trade. Three members of Trinity Force still available. Only two left for the side of the red team. Blitz. The Nautilus will back here, but the Garen's all you need. The J4 manages to get in and get his couple of knockups. Grabs the Vi. Garen grabs the Jax. That's an ace for Trinity Force as they're going to look to push their advantage mid. An absolutely great fight. The red team committed everything to try to at least get to the Baron and potentially force a steal, or to at least kill them with the Baron buff so that this wouldn't happen. Baron buff minions now in your base. But a majority of your team is starting to come up. Although the only people that do damage are still dead. But now you have these minions in your base. You've lost the Baron buff. Although only two members of Trinity Force have the buff, it is enough to start pushing advantage. As it looks like the Ocean Drake is the target. That will be their fourth Drake objective to zero objectives for the side of the red team. Another large shortcoming for this team of randoms is not being able to secure any objectives throughout the game. They are now down almost 11,000 gold at 27 minutes. I mean, at this point, you have to try to survive. You try to survive the Baron and those buffed minions. You try to get a pick on a Kaisa like this. That draws the Jax away, though, and Jax recognizes that. A big minion wave there to kind of stutter him around. Does manage to go back. He does have a GA now in his kit. Recognizing his importance to this game. If there is going to be a way for this red team to come back, it's probably going to be through the sense of the Jax and his damage and his ability to stay alive. And Trinity Force knows that, though. They have been going for this Jax over and over again. Twisted Fate threatening the ultimate there, but the entirety of the red team is clumped together. Again, I don't know if their ability to successfully win team fights. As you see, all five members are now, all ten players are now on the top side, as Garen is going to do a little bit of sneaking around. Okay, it's up there by the Blitzcrank. It's stunned in the middle of it, though. All of the members on this top turret. A lot of pressure here from Trinity Force. They're looking to spread the wealth out now. As you see them starting to push up this mid lane. They're going to start splitting up this red team, which is where they're going to be able to start getting these team fights. And there's a flash forward by the Twisted Fate. He manages to get a lot of damage onto the Vi, but he gets hooked and decimated. But that's going to be enough of an initiation for this Garen. Although, there's a melting down from Trinity Force. They've managed to grab three as Garen is forced to free from his life. The Nautilus as well. And they managed to get the Garen. That is a one for four trade. As that was not the fight that Trinity Force wanted, but that's the fight they ended up taking. And suddenly, the red team got a win. As the Blitzcrank starts moving to clear some of the vision, a good opportunity to do that. Unfortunately, that team fight is not going to lend itself to any major accomplishments for the side of the red team. They do manage to stop the initial siege and prolong the game a little bit longer. 
Jax will try to push out this bottom wave into the tier one turret that still stands at 30 minutes. As he knows that's got to be his target, he will try to take it out and will successfully do so. That is at least one tower as he jumps away, though. Going to go ahead and grab some farm while he's here. The Nautilus is moving in. The Twisted Fate's going to come in as well. Are they actually going to save this tier one turret? Yes! There's the resurrection by the Jax. And he will go for the Twisted Fate. Manages to try to jump away. Here comes the Nautilus, though. One hook. Easy money. Grabs him. And yeah, just like that, Parski gets his 13th kill of the game. And they save their tier one turret. At 31 minutes into the game, if you can't get a tier one turret... And that is a hard carry on the side of the red team. Now dead. Pop the GA. Could not survive. Overextended himself onto the top lane. The Lucian is going to go ahead and try to back here. It is a 5v4 advantage for Trinity Force touchdown. Let's see what they can make happen here as they're starting to siege this bottom side inhibitor turret. They grab the inhibitor turret. Here comes the inhibitor next. Super minions starting to push onto this mid lane. They are controlling the pace of this ending very well. And despite the giant wave that's getting pushed onto the top side, they are looking to roll back. As the entirety of Trinity Force is going to escape into the top side jungle. Let the super minions start to do some work here. Their eyes are on this Baron. 30 seconds remaining until that one spawns. Trying to at least claim vision. The red team going to be spotted out, moving in that same direction. Garen waiting in a bush. I don't think they've seen that this team rolls together in a pack. Garen will recognize, though, that he might be in trouble as here comes the Baron spawn. The question is, is red team going to force it? They are around it, and it looks like this might be a bait for Trinity Force as they get the pull in, and Parsky gets melted! An absolutely incredible hook by the Blitzcrank! And suddenly, one of your highest damage dealers is already gone, but here goes the Twisted Fate! Just zooming himself right into the base. He's going to start doing some damage here. That's going to force the red team to go back. But there's a fight in the middle. It's going to actually stop the back. The Jax is the only one that can respond to the, to the Twisted Fate. Hounds on. Completely melts the vibe. Ultimate coming down there as the Twisted Fate will go ahead and enter the fight as well. The zone is popped there by the J4 as the Garen manages to get the, uh, get the Annie. The J4 ultimate on the deletion will secure him as well as it's just a Blitzcrank. And the Jax, Garen is not the one you want though as he starts to spin. The damage comes out. He manages to get big damage on to the Blitzcrank. He melts as well. And this one is all but over. Jax retreating into his own base. What can he do against three sieging members of Trinity Force touchdown? Nothing but try to get a pick as he moves in, gets a stun in. The J4 was the target and he will get pulled back in by the Nautilus who's hit most of his hooks today. And he will melt down the inhibitor turret is next and Trinity Force touchdown with a complete win.